So, um, I'm going to start off by explaining what I'm about to do. Uh, I want to explain why I do this and why a lot of us do what we do. Um, because you need to start off with why. And maybe the best way to express why is with a manifesto. And uh, I think it's manifesto season. It's time to reconsider everything and to ask that question, why are we doing this and what are we heading to? So uh, yesterday, uh, for this event, but also for a project related to Cosmos, uh, I drafted a initial draft of a manifesto, which uh, I will read out to you. Uh, so bear with me. But um, it's also just the beginning. In the spirit of radical transparency, uh, what I'm doing is I'm sharing everything as it's happening. So all of this is incomplete. They're mostly just concepts. But uh, it's an opportunity, an invitation for everyone to participate, if you're so inclined. All right, so here it is. So we are surrounded by fire. When you follow the news and reports, and you find that there's little hope for a future, in the future of our children. The system that we have inherited and co-created has become unsustainable. So, you see here, surrounded by fire. Here's the uh, South American continent. You see um, that gray area in the middle is just smoke. So we have now smoke at a global scale. And though our potential is unlimited in the long run, we have forgotten how to live in harmony, and we have robbed ourselves, and we are still ourselves stealing. We have been robbed ourselves, and we are still stealing from the prosperity of future generations for the sake of consumption powered by capitalism. Capitalism is combustion. One's superior ability to accumulate capital begets more capital exponentially. And capitalism is actually the most magnificent, 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 sorry, fire that is engulfing this planet today. So power begets power, oil begets oil, and when left unchecked, capitalism extinguishes itself because it doesn't have a solution. When the power of combustion is harnessed in a macroeconomic design, to bring sustenance and harmony and balance to these ecosystems in which we all reside, then we have a chance of surviving and fulfilling our collective destiny. Our destiny, that is, to harness the power of the sun. Oh, I missed something here. To harness the power of our sun, to reach out to the stars, to spread out and multiply and the joy of our being. And as Carl Sagan said, we are made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. And this stardust just wants to feel finally at home, at peace and in love with ourselves, and at peace with the laws of the universe. While capitalism may appear to be an unstoppable force, in fact, the matter is capital and private property are constructs of our collective hallucination. And it's we the people who enforce property laws and our minds are open enough to consider different ways of being. And we must, unless we want to find ourselves completely surrounded by the machines of private property and become discarded, as Prophet James Cameron has forewarned to spell. We must each use our voices, those that we've always had but never had the opportunity to use, and sing out loud, with a thunder that pierces through the fabric of this constructed hallucination can change the tune of our reality for the progression of this song called humanity. Today, we are given a golden opportunity to harness the gift of computing in our hands and communication at the speed of light to reimagine re where we as a collective society decide to devote our collective focus of power and attention. 
about the nature of free voluntary trade using our tools. We can make this transition entirely peaceful to synthesize a new beginning that transcends the false duality of capitalism versus socialism. Under no authority and with no preconceived notion of nations and the way that we've been considering borders and citizenship, Time is in short supply. We are dealing with an apocalyptic set of unfolding tragedies, a deteriorating environment, worsening global warming and climate change, soon to be causing loss of power and electricity, food shortages, worsening economy. Through the popping of this global pyramid scheme responsible for the exploitation of people and our natural resources racket of war for oil and power, which is already disintegrating continental unions. And the greatest superpowers that we see, we see the tolerance and acceptance of darkness, of opacity and unaccountability, and decay to tyranny. So what do we do? We have to figure out what our core values are, a thing that we will not compromise on to lead us to the future. We must not compromise on our core values of transparency, accountability, not just of sustainability, but of regenerative environmental integration. For we are tenders of the earth and of democracy and equality, of opportunity and of open-mindedness. By fully committing to our core values, non-compromising, of transparency, accountability, environmental stewardship, of providing voice and exit, of democracy, security, of efficiency, of open-mindedness and dialogue and cooperation. If we truly commit to our core values, we can organize our communities to be decentralized and autonomous, get connected. And from the votes, and from the votes of the people, with our hands and feet, led by our reason, with our attention and associations, and with our words and allegiances, and with radical transparency, the right communities will emerge and prosper. But we have to commit to it. We have to commit to our core values from the beginning, from the beginning in order for that to work. So when Moon, I think that's a stepping stone for me. I guess the question is, when Virgo? Virgo is a constellation that took the scales of Libra to the heavens, according to Greek mythology. It's also the largest supercluster in the cosmos, and I believe we are destined to go there. If starting is half the journey, and we would be halfway when the software that powers our social networking and communications are completely open source and free, with privacy well integrated and enabled by default, when there exists no one monopoly or an oligopoly but a vast federation of networks speaking a common protocol for interoperability, when the protocols are well designed enough for multiple implementations to compete, to provide constructive dialogue, and information discovery, and also designed to enable our long-term happiness and well-being. When our mobile and desktop devices are completely open and a free design, so that anyone can manufacture them. And when we know with near certainty that our devices in our hands are secure and not compromised by any authority. When the world has become so saturated with open source that it becomes the norm, where genuine contributions are rewarded automatically. When our hardware devices are optimized not only for usability, but also for waste reduction and reusability via modularity, and to take into account the full cycle of manufacturing to, to disposal and the cost of things rather than design for profits from consumerism. When our social services and public agencies are not held hostage by executive incompetence, 
but are comprised of a network of interoperating, decentralized, autonomous organizations. When we have trust in our institutions by virtue of their openness and transparency and accountability. When our representatives are not merely talking heads on censored media channels, but are people that we know through our exposure accounting for different areas of expertise. When we synthesize these open and free software, hardware, protocols, procedures, and data to make intelligent collective decisions for resource management. And when we enable radically transparent operation, which is necessary for accountability, but also facilitates constructive dialogue. When it all comes together to enable human coordination at all scales, from social groups to corporations and co-ops, to international communities united under a common mission, to states and municipal governments, with a public engaged in democracy. When all the people on the earth feel that their voices are heard and that they matter. When our internet infrastructure becomes sufficiently open and resilient, when censorship becomes impossible due to the nature of an incentivized networking protocol and hardware and fiber optic lines owned and operated by each local community. When our financial system is designed to give power to the people to protect the environment rather than bow to the hollow. When no authority has the ability to dictate which monetary system one can use by decree but rather when we, the buyers and sellers, get to vote with our crypto wallets, what causes to support, such as that of a local currency, where inflationary issues and voluntary tax revenues are used to fund for common infrastructure development, not by virtue of legislation, but in goodwill and social cohesion. When our financial system is designed to heal the people on the planet on which to depend, rather than exploit it, and when we, the students of life, are given the opportunity to master any aspect of the technological infrastructure in which our livelihoods depend, when we no longer need to expend time and our time and livelihood accounting for our taxes, when all these new systems work together to heal the planet and our sense of greater community bound by love, not hate and fear, then we will be halfway. Um, Virgo is a new project. If Bitcoin represents capitalism, Libra, these are industry coins, there's a missing half that we need to consider in the context of where we are today. And, and we need more than cryptocurrencies for that. It's, it's about bringing power to the people, empowering us to coordinate together. What we need to do is figure out how to organize and cooperate better to build protocols to help us do this. More importantly, for us to find each other. And we do that by voicing out our own individual manifestos. So if you're interested and what I'm saying resonates with you, please join us for a new chapter. And uh, feel at one with a sense of purpose. Thank you.